Shields up, Ironbreakers. How's everybody doing? Today, I'm going to be bringing you guys a couple of tips uh, on how to raise your power level, as well as where you should be spending your glimmer, and finally, how to enter the Leviathan Underbelly solo. Just bear in mind, though, just because you can enter the Leviathan Underbelly solo does not necessarily mean that you should do it. However, you might want to hang out there, explore, do all that stuff. So that particular bit is going to come closer to the end of this video slash live stream. Uh, to start things off, I wanted to tell you guys um, a couple of tips on how to raise your power the best. I mean, maybe not the best possible way, but, you know, some of the tips that I've personally used in raising my uh, power. So at this point in time, I am level 291. Uh, and some of you guys might think, oh, that's because you've already done the raid and all this other stuff. And I got to be honest, I have done, I would consider two bosses on the raid because some people consider that the first encounter thingy where you do the banners and shit. They consider that a boss. I don't consider that a boss. Uh, that's just like a way to open the doors. There is loot after it. But anyway, uh, so I've done that and I've done the bathhouse and I've done the dogs and the dogs are a fucking pain in the ass. But anyway, you guys might think that's why I have power level 291. It's not the raid. The only contribution to the raid to my power level is this rocket launcher, which is 292. That's it. If you guys look at the rest of my gear, I have 295 might and multi tool 290. 294 uh, gun, 292 helmet, 296 armor, 295 leg armor. So it's like all of this other stuff gotten completely outside of the raid. So you don't even have to step foot in the raid to break 290. You don't have to. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. So the raid is not essential and that's not how I got my power level. Now, before we get started... Um, one of the things that is very important uh, is we talk about tokens. Now, you guys will probably know by now that you will get tokens by doing quests, whether those be in Nessus or in IO or in... Actually, I don't have any EDZ tokens right now. Damn. Uh, but yeah, basically, as you do quests and patrol missions and find chests and all of these other things, you will get tokens, which you can then redeem at uh, the different vendors... Uh, throughout the world. Now, the most important bit for me is that you delay redeeming those things as much as you possibly can because as you do public events and other things, you will get loot and that loot is constantly increasing in power all the way up to 265. So I would wait until you hit the barrier of 265, which is probably what most people will be hitting. Uh, it's going to be like their first power check, so to speak, the first soft cap. Uh, that's the first thing that you're going to be hitting. And the reason I would uh, tell you guys that you should wait until then to claim your tokens is because your tokens are going to be level 265 as well. That's their cap. However, there is a very important thing, which is the legendary armor and legendary weapon mods. So the more tokens you're able to redeem, the higher chances you have to get a weapon that has a legendary um, mod. So for instance, let's have a look at some of the weapons that I have here. So this is a hand cannon. It is 275 power. So if I go to the details, you'll notice that it's got a rare mod. So this rare mod doesn't really do much for the weapon other than change its damage type to arc. So it's not a particularly impressive weapon mod. Now, if you look, for instance, at the other weapon that I have here, which is the Mida Mini Tool, which I actually don't use this weapon. I'm just using it now because it's my highest power weapon. Uh, it has a solar damage mod, which adds five attack. So what this does is it actually increases the power level of this item by five because of the simple fact that it has this legendary mod. So the actual level of this item is 290. So when you're hitting that 265 um, wall, if you claim enough of those tokens, you will eventually get weapons that are 270, and those weapons will have the legendary, or, um, the legendary weapon modification. And why is this important? Because this will increase the power of your weapon by 5, regardless of what you do to it. So for instance, uh, if I was to consume... Uh, okay, I don't have an actual... Okay, is this hand cannon? Does this have the mod? It does not have the mod. 
Uh, let me see. Maybe I'll just spend the mod here to show you guys what I mean. So basically, this hand cannon is 275. Let me just see. They're, is it the same? Yeah, it's the same hand cannon. So this hand cannon is 275. This hand cannon is 282. So if I consume the 282 cannon, this hand cannon would become 282 power. However, if I put a legendary mod on it and then consume it, it will increase the level to 287. So any weapon that you have that has a legendary mod will get the power level of the weapon you consume plus five. Always plus five. All of the exotic um, weapons have this legendary mod. So like, for instance, my Sunshot, it's got five attack. Uh, my Rat King, it's also got five attack. So all your legendary, all your exotic weapons will have this mod, which is why exotics are such an important part and breaking through those gaps of 265, 270, all of that stuff. So always bear in mind, if you, whenever you pick up a new weapon, uh, particularly a legendary weapon, because uh, blue weapons don't come with legendary mods. So whenever you pick up a legendary weapon, always check the details, see if it has a legendary mod. Because again, when you're trying to break through that 265, 270, like every little bit helps. Uh, the same thing goes for armor pieces. Whenever you pick up a new armor piece, always check, does it have a legendary uh, mod, which always increases everything by five. So your objective is going to get, is going to be to try to get legendary mods on every single piece of armor. <laughs> so that is going to be one of the first things that you want to try and do. So that's why I'm telling you, Power up to 265 by doing public events, by grabbing random chests, by killing enemies, by doing quests. And once you get to 265, only then claim all of your tokens so that you will eventually get something that is 270 and it will help you start going above and getting to that 270 level. So eventually when you get to 270, then your loot's going to start improving. You're going to start getting 261 loot, which will then allow you to start consuming stuff with the weapons that have plus five mods so that you slowly grind up and up until you get to the higher tiers. That's one of the things that you got to do. Again, remember, legendary tokens, super important. Now, another thing that you should be doing, which I've already done, I've already completed all of them, but once you get to level 20, uh, each of the planets is going to have a blue quest line. Now, depending on the planet, this is going to lead to different things. So there's currently three exotic um, weapons that you can get uh, at different tiers of difficulty, but usually they're not too hard to do. I've done most of them solo. If you want to do them with the fire team, do them with the fire team. If you're in the Ironbreakers clan and you need, you need help, just ask people through the app. That's also something I, I want to talk about at the end of this live stream just request people for help if that's something you need but usually you just come onto the map i think that the quest the the quest that i'm talking about right now is actually a blue one that shows up over here it is called oh captain that is the first one that will give you i believe weapons in the range of 288 power which will give you storm and drang now these are actually pretty bad weapons in my opinion they're not great but they will increase your power level and that's what you want so this is the easiest one, the Captain, oh Captain, my Captain quest chain. It's like three or four quests, and by the time you're done, you should have a 280, I think it's a 284 um, sidearm that they're going to give you. And after that, you also get um, a legendary item, which is the exotic quest line for picking up Sturm. And um, that is going to require you to, like, kill stuff with the Drang weapon. Like, you'll see, it. the instructions are super easy. You just read the legendary item and it will tell you exactly what you got to do. When you're done with that, you will probably get the Sturm, which is, it should be around 288, I think. So you will get a weapon that is 284 power level, another weapon that will be 288. So that would be one of the first things you want to do. It's called O Captain. Uh, it is a level 20 quest. So you got to finish the game. You gotta get to level 20, and you, then you will get that quest. Adventure. Once again, it's a blue quest. The other quest that you will probably want to do next is on Earth, and it is also fairly close to uh, Devrim K here, and it should be called Enhance. Once you complete the Enhance quest, you will get, uh, again, you will get um, a legendary weapon, which I believe might be item level 274. Uh, which is the Mita multi-tool. 
Now, the Mida Multi-Tool is going to be a submachine gun, but you're also going to get a legendary item to perform another exotic quest, which will get you eventually the Mighty Mul the Mida Multi-Tool exotic weapon. Again, it's going to require you to jump through a bunch of hoops and kill stuff while airborne and kill things without reloading. It's a pain in the ass to do. But when you're done, you get a um, an exotic rifle, and this can be soloed. Both of these quests can be soloed, which is why it's the two quests that I'm bringing up. And the exotic scout rifle that you're going to get should be power level 292. At least uh, that's the level that I got in my Mida multi-tool, I think. Although I really only used it once, because I, I instantly skipped to it. I instantly skipped through it. Uh, so yeah, this is the Mata Multi-Tool. This is the weapon that you're going to be getting with the quest that I was talking about. The other weapon that you'll be getting is the Sturm. Looks like Sturm is actually 284. So yeah, these are the two that you can get that I've just mentioned. And like I said, both of them have um, legendary engrams. So if I consume other items to level these... Uh, they will increase in the power of the other items plus five. So if I was, do I have any hand cannons that are big? So like, for instance, you see here, Sunshot. If I was to consume sh Sunshot, Sunshot is actually 288 right now because it's got a plus five mod, so you have to count minus five. So the level of the Sunshot is actually 288. If I was to consume it with Sturm right here, I would get the same item level as the Sunshot, basically, because both of them have legendary uh, mods. So there you go. But anyway, you got Sturm, you got Mida Multi-Tool. These are two weapons you should only be using one, obviously, and you should be using the one with the highest power. So eventually, you'll want to get the Mida Multi-Tool. Once you get the Mida Multi-Tool, the next one that I would work on is the Rat King. Now, the Rat King is going to require help in order to obtain. So the very first thing you got to do for the Rat King is, again, there is another blue quest that you can do. This particular blue quest will be on Titan. And what is the name of the quest? The name of the quest is Enemy of My Enemy. It should start somewhere in here. It's going to have you run all over Titan, do a bunch of stuff. By the time you're done, it's like a three quest, um, three quests quest line. By the time you're done, uh, you will have, uh, again, a legendary item. This legendary item, however, is not going to give you instructions. It is going to give you a riddle. Now, this is fairly easy if you Google this stuff up. It's fairly easy to figure out how to get the Rat King. But basically, you need someone else who is also on the quest. And an important note here, if the person has already finished the quest, like me, and has the Rat King, the Rat King needs to be equipped. Because if you don't equip the Rat King, the quest does not progress for the other person. I don't know why that is. I think that might actually be a bug, but it doesn't matter. For now, if you're trying to help somebody get the Rat King, make sure you have the Rat King equipped. Not just in your inventory, equipped. Because I was trying to do this quest with Nukem Dukem the other day, and I just had it in my inventory, and it wasn't counting. So you need to have the Rat King equipped. But anyway, if you find two people that are on the Rat King quest, here are the events that you have to do and in which order. For starters, you have to do three patrols together so you need to be on a fire team with someone else that is also in the rat king quest or has the rat king gun and you need to do three patrols together when you do the three patrols it should evolve into another item it should give you another riddle if it hasn't evolved then you're doing something wrong it basically will have a checkpoint it will go once you do the first patrol it will be one out of three second patrol two out of three and then three out of three and it will change the item into something else so the next riddle will also say some kind of text. And again, you need to be with someone in your fire team that also has the Rat King gun or the Rat King quest. And you need to do two public events. Once you complete these two public events, um, the item will once again change. It, again, it tracks your progress. So you do one public event, it will show one out of two. You do two public events, it will complete it, change the item again. Next, it will give you another riddle. When the Rat King gives you the third riddle, then you got to be with someone that also has the Rat King, and you both have to do two Crucible matches. You don't have to win, but you need to do two Crucible matches. Uh, again, remember, I can't stress this enough. If the person already has the gun, make sure it is equipped. Because if you don't have the gun, if you're just on the quest, it's going to show up in here. But if you do have the gun, you need to equip it. Otherwise, the other person is not going to get it. Now, um... After you do the two Crucible matches, once again, it updates in between each match. Uh, once you do the two Crucible matches, 
it will complete and it will give you another item and the next objective is going to be the hardest one and to be completely honest this week is the best week to do it because the current nightfall is super easy to do with five minutes to spare you just need to be somewhat organized and it is super easy to do um but anyway you need to complete the nightfall and you need to have five minutes left over by the time you kill the boss so nightfalls this time around are always timed so you have to get enough time that you will be able to kill the boss and still have five minutes left in the timer so that's the hard the the hardest thing you will have to do for this quest line now today's uh not today's this week's um nightfall is uh the inverted spire so it's the same strike that people have done in the it's the same strike that people have done in the beta and the way that i would do it is i'm not going to show you guys in gameplay because i would have to sort out a fire team and do that stuff but anyways there's like three main checkpoints if i'm not mistaken so first you go through you kill the monsters after you kill them you're going to scan the conflux thing uh the jumping things will appear you jump now after your first jump, you're going to spawn in a place that is just like chuck full of enemies, grab your rocket launcher, shoot a rocket at the Colossus, and then skip everything else. Instantly skip everything, jump to the next section. Once you get to the next section, you're going to see a ring. Do not pick up that ring. Kill everything in the area before you pick up the ring. After you kill everything, then pick up the ring. That ring will then spawn a bunch of rings. Each of those rings will give you 30 seconds. So make sure you grab every last one of them to optimize your time. After that, skip through everything you possibly can until you get to the next section, which, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be uh, the two commanders. So at the two commanders, once again, you will have a ring there. Do not pick it up. Kill the two commanders. After you kill them, the uh, the whole army despawns. So kill the two commanders. Uh, after you kill the two commanders, kill the Colossus, because there's also a Colossus there. After you kill that Colossus, grab the ring. Uh, have your fire team split. One person takes left, one person takes mid, one person takes right. Pick up the rings as fast as you possibly can. Move on. Next stage. Next stage, you jump down, but don't, don't even bother killing stuff. Just like straight up activate the platform. If you all die, it's not a problem. Do not respawn. Wait until the percentage thing completes because then you can just skip everything. So again, skip everything. Get your ass to the, um, get your ass, uh, the turning things, the mines. I forget what, what's it called. There's rings there too. Uh, but by the time you get there, you should have around 9 to 10 minutes left over if you've been doing the stuff that I've been saying correctly. Uh, so just try to pick up as many rings as you can. But if you can't, if people start dying and stuff, just ignore it. Rush for the boss. Once you get to the boss fight, it teleports everyone. Even the people that are dead, they will get teleported into the boss room. And once you get there, basically wait for um, the final stage of the boss fight. I mean, obviously, kill the boss as fast as you possibly can. And in the final stage of the boss fight, whenever it is your element, get your super, blast the boss with as much damage as possible, because this raid has prism, so you have to wait for your element to be triggered, deal as much damage to the boss as you possibly can, and kill the boss. And hopefully you will have five minutes left over with the instructions I gave you, and that will give you the Rat King, which in my case, it gave me the Rat King at 294 power. So... Why have I uh, been talking about all of these exotic uh, quest lines before getting to the weekly powerful engrams? Because I believe that a lot of these exotics are actually... Um, I believe they're locked. I'm not entirely sure if they're locked or not, but I've seen people get these at the exact same level that I've gotten them. So, like, I think the Mata Multi-Tool will be 292. I think the Sturm will always be 284. I think the Rat King will always be 294. I'm not sure. Because again, the game just came out last week. So I'm not sure. I've looked up through websites. Nobody seems to be confirming whether or not this is the case. But so far, from my experience, from the people that I've interacted with, most people have gotten these weapons at the same power that I've got them. So Sturm 284, Mata Multi Tool 292, Rat King 294. So therefore, if that is the case and these exotics are fixed, then you will you will want to raise your power as much as possible before you get your weekly powerful engrams because those are not fixed. 
So anyway, this is again, just how to raise your power. So we've talked about heroic public events always by the way when i mention public events always make sure that you trigger the heroic mode uh you guys again you can google this up i'm not going to tell you how to trigger the heroic mode for every event because i could be here for like 30 minutes telling you about that i'll give you some examples uh the cabal excavation one a ship a ship shows up destroy the ship that triggers the heroic event um the the other cabal thing with the big thing that shows up i don't know if it's a drill or whatever the fuck it is but it's the thing that's got the vents and the big orange shield you have to shoot the vents after you shoot the vents it triggers the heroic event and again every single public event has an heroic mode the fallen one with the um with the tank you pick up the orbs you unlock all of the um, all of the things with the scorch cannons and after that triggers heroic mode another tank shows up so always trigger heroic mode because it will give you higher higher tier of gear and a higher chance to get exotics and exotics are always higher tier than the stuff you currently have so bear that in mind always try to trigger the heroic event the the heroic mode in public events so i talked about public events the tokens the plus five mods the blue quests which will get you the exotic and finally the rat king now it's time to talk about the weekly powerful engrams so if you go to your map and you press l2 it's going to tell you these milestone things they're, they're the weekly milestones so this one the crucible challenges this is actually just a reputation bundle so i don't have to do this one but you can because again this gives you tokens and tokens will get you some more gear but you will have four activities besides the raid that will get you that powerful gear that you see there uh, on the Leviathan. So that's the one that I haven't completed yet, but I've completed all the other ones. The other four will usually be the Nightfall, uh, earning 5,000 clan experience, um, which is the other one. There's something about the Crucible, usually always a quest about the Crucible. And uh, what is after that? There's a Flashpoint, which usually includes doing challenges on one of the planets, which is all... All of these, all these four, these are super easy to do. And these are four powerful gear engrams that you're going to get. So they're extremely important and these will raise your power level the most out of anything that I've told you. The powerful gear will raise your, your power level the most. Just remember something, you'll want to be as high in power level as possible before you collect these powerful gear engrams like you need to have exhausted everything that you can possibly do for that week before you claim them now something i haven't seen people mention though and i found out only last night is that so these powerful engrams which are also called luminous engrams they will scale based on your personal power now the interesting thing that i've noticed is that either this is a bug or I'm not entirely sure if it's a bug or not, but different the different quests will scale different power levels, if that makes sense. So, for instance, in my case last night, because this was the first time I noticed this, um, the the items that I was getting from Shax were my power level plus two. The item that I was going to get from the from Zavala was at my power level. The item that I was going to get from Hawthorne was at my power level, and the item that I was going to get from Cade was my power level plus one. So anyone who has a basic understanding of how power level works will be like, that doesn't make any fucking sense, because why would they give you different power levels? But basically that means in order to maximally optimize it, for my case at least, I would want to open up the clan one from Hawthorne and the Zavala one first. Then I would want to open up the Kate 6 one, which is the Flashpoint second. And then I would want to open up the Shax one last because that's how the power was scaling. It was giving me more power on the Shax and on the Kate one. So my advice is complete all of the quests, uh, all of the powerful gear quests, complete all of them. And after you complete all of these quests, before you actually come and accept the Luminous Engram, check the item level on each of the Engrams. So you're going to get one from Soraya Hawthorne, you're going to get another one from Lord Shax, another one from Zavala, and another one from Kate Six. So visit each of them and note down the power level. Because to give you guys an idea, last night I was 288 power level. 
The um, powerful engram I got from Soraya was 288. The powerful engram I got from Zavala was also 288. The one I got from Cade was 289. And the one I got from Shax was 290. And I know that some people are going to say, oh, that's just because you opened up the other engrams and then powered yourself up. No, 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 no. I didn't open them. I checked them before I opened them. And this was the power level that they were showing. So again, make sure you double check and always open from the lowest power to the highest power so that you it's going to scale even more so bear that in mind so that is at least in my opinion that is a particularly important thing that i haven't seen a single person touch on yet so again make sure check your powerful engrams before you um before you claim them the man completely mad and i know that people are like oh my god you're talking about like plus one power yeah plus one power at a time is how i got the fucking 291 so yeah that's how it works that's literally how it works you want to optimize every single little piece if you really want to increase your power now this is everything i can really tell you about how to increase uh your power so you know review the video rewind it watch it again if you missed any bit uh but yeah these are all the tips i can give you on raising your power now the other thing is going to be your glimmer dump now to talk about glimmer dump a lot of people have been saying there's no glimmer dump i just have to spend stuff on like these cade things which i've bought a bunch of them as well uh the scout reports which will reveal you chests and stuff on the different planets and yes that's a good investment of glimmer but it is not the best investment of best investment of glimmer and it's not going to make sense to you guys for a while but whenever you cap glimmer come in here and always always buy the random mods you guys can see that i have zero glimmer right now that's because last night i spent every bit of glimmer i had on this it is worth it believe me because here's what's gonna happen once you get enough of these random mods uh, and you get to 280 light level. This will only—I think this only unlocks once you get to 280 light level. He's going to show you a bunch of um, a bunch of legendary mods down here. So, like, let me show you guys my mod list. Uh, modifications, boom. And let me actually sort this by rarity. So you can see that I have a bunch of legendary mods. These are the mods that I was telling you guys about at the start. These are the plus five mods. All the legendary mods increase the item level of an item by five. So you want to make sure every single piece of your armor has these plus five mods. Now, the important thing and why you need to constantly buy those random blue mods is because they are the exchange coin. So for instance, you see this solar impact mod, you get three of these and you can exchange it for a, actually I don't have a, oh, I do have one. You can exchange it for one of these, which is the plus five one. So basically you get the crappy version, change it into the plus five version. And you're like, okay, but my armor already, already has everything plus five, so why the fuck do I need that stuff anymore? Well, once you get to the point where all of your armor has plus five, you'll want to optimize it for the class that you are playing. So like, for instance, I'm playing a Sentinel, which is the Void class, so I'll want to make sure that all of the uh, mods that I have increase my void stuff so here this will make my void melee abilities recharge faster this will also make my void melee abilities recharge faster this makes my class abilities recharge faster when using a void subclass so this is the type of stuff that you want to get because this is going to be what determines how much damage you are going to be able to deal and how well optimized you are so it's not just enough to have the plus five mods you need to have the proper first five mods now i'm not saying that going the class mods is the best way to go that's the way that I'm personally going because you have also other different mods that you can get. Like, for instance, I can get increased defense, increased armor recovery if I want to. Or I can get um, arc grenades. Actually, arc grenades for Titan, by the way, are the fucking best. They're just the fucking best if you're playing Striker Titan. Just like, forget about it. And as a matter of fact, if you guys want a quick tip on Titan, if you want to maximize your fucking damage to the nth degree, if you want to just like deal the most damage you possibly can as a Titan, forget Sunbreaker, forget Sentinel, get your ass to the Striker and make sure you have the fucking double grenade thing and then get the pulse grenade. This thing deals so much fucking damage to give you guys an idea, um, when, in the night that I was raiding, uh, when we got to the dogs, I was playing Sentinel because obviously it's got the shield slam and all the stuff that I like. 
and my damage was like every attempt that we're doing my damage was hovering around 200k on a good try on a good try where i was able to deal good damage use my super use my grenades use all that stuff properly i would deal around 200,000 damage i just switched my class to striker and i was doing 700,000 damage that's more than three times the amount of damage i was dealing as a sentinel uh i also tried sunbreaker but I, I didn't have, I don't think I had proper gear for Sunbreaker. So I don't know if the Sunbreaker account, um, attempt should count. But Sunbreaker was dealing around the same damage as Sentinel. Striker, it was dealing more than three times the amount of damage. It was that powerful. Just bear in mind, you will want to have the Pulse Grenade and the, the Seismic, the Code of the Earth Shaker because that is going to give you an additional grenade charge. Because the grenades are the fucking shit. Like Pulse Grenades on friggin striker forget about it it's just like beast mode damage not even just not even man don't even don't even go there but yeah that's that's a little tip on titan damage as well while i was talking about it uh so we talked oh yeah i was talking about the glimmer dumb so again you'll want to optimize the stuff to your class or to whatever way you want to play because like maybe you think you can deal more damage if you can reload faster there are mods for that as well i don't think i have i don't have one of those legendary wait i probably do let me just check my inventory properly mods uh okay if you think like for instance oh man if only i could you know reload faster my power weapon i can increase my damage there you go there's a power munition loader oh if i could re reload my energy weapon i could do more damage there you go energy weapon there's also a kinetic weapon reload uh there's also something that increases your movement speed and, and why the fuck do i have a hunter cloak mod fuck you game don't give me hunter cloak shit uh but anyway uh this this is probably from bright engrams because bright engrams give you random garbage um and then the other thing is say for instance you have a lot of these legendary items which you will have if you spend glimmer on all of the rare ones you will then be able to trade in and by the way if you come to the gunsmith and you see any um any legendary items in here there's no reason not to exchange them there's zero reason not to exchange because basically it's the upgraded version of the rare one it doesn't cost you any glimmer it doesn't cost you anything it just uses up the rare uh mod which is fucking useless once you get to like 270 uh, and just like gives you a legendary version of it. So if you see anything down here, claim everything, grab all of them, literally just like grab everything. Because again, this is where you want to spend your glimmer, all of your glimmer, random mods. And once you have three of the same mod, then exchange it instantly. And then when you are checking your mods, like then you, you can be like, okay, so th there are these mods that I don't really need, which happens to be my case with this dumbass fucking hunter mod which i don't want hunter mods i'm a goddamn titan please you can dismantle them and you're going to get a mod component so that's important let me dismantle another one of these items that i have here like for instance i don't know recovery i'll probably not use recovery uh i'm going to dismantle this uh, self-repairing mod it's going to give me another another mod component so those are two mods that i wasn't going to use and basically you can come to banshee and then you can exchange them or something that you want so for instance maybe you want another armor mod which is actually i'm i'm looking for certain very specific armor mods for my different subclasses so i want more armor mods so i'll just come here and i'll be like okay create another armor mod again see it's going to cost you more glimmer so always try to save some glimmer as well because you need glimmer to apply the upgrades and all that stuff so burn your glimmer whenever you have too much on random mods but leave yourself with some so that you can actually apply those mods to the weapons as well as create new mods if you have to so i'm going to create a new armor mod and i got a shit i got the exact same mod that i fucking had so that was unlucky but i could have gotten something else i could have gotten something that i needed so for instance i would like to have i'm trying to create a gear set for each of my classes so like right now i have my void gear set this will give me arc melee ability so this is for my arc set and this is what i want to have for my fire set but unfortunately i don't have any mods that i can use that would benefit my uh solar subclass so it's just sitting there not really doing much but that's where you want to burn your glimmer so we've talked about how to power up your gear where you want to burn your glimmer and how you want to burn your glimmer 
And now that we've done all that, you guys are probably wondering, okay, so now it's time for the last thing. Show us how to enter the Leviathan Underbelly solo. Well, let me show you. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So if you want to come to the raid, the raid's over here. You can just launch. You can go to the raid solo if you want to. Again, not advisable. You guys can check it out. You can explore it if you want to, because a lot of people just want to like explore the raid. And I think they, they have this belief that you probably need like a six-man fire team to go to the raid. You don't need a six-man fire team to visit the raid. You can go visit the raid by yourself. Uh, however, you're probably not going to be able to progress much through it. But you can explore the underbelly, which is a massive labyrinth. And as a matter of fact, you can actually grind legendary engrams off the enemies there if you're powerful enough. Because you can kill the enemies solo. Um, so, you know, just equip like uh, one of those fire team medallions, like these things, which like increase your drop rate. And if you don't want to do the events, just go in and kill some of these guys and they can drop like 280 something legendaries. So that could be a way for you to progress. Anyway, welcome to the raid. This is, we're currently at the top of the Leviathan. If you look down, you can see like just a massive fucking spaceship. Because, like, I don't know if everybody understands this, but, like, if you see this, this whole thing, this is the world eater. Like, think of this thing where I'm circling now. This is its mouth, and it's coming up on Nessus. It's going to just, like, fucking eat Nessus. So this whole thing back here, that's the world eater. The raid takes place on top of the world eater. <laughs> anyway, so how do you enter... The thing solo. So there's a bunch of levers, puzzles around, and a bunch of really messed up puzzles that you can do. And these are the guys that you can farm if you want to. You can kill them. They're not particularly hard. They might be a little bit tricky to do solo, but you can kill them. I'm not going to do that because that doesn't have anything to do with why we're here. Anyway, if you go below, which is you start at the top over there, you can jump down and come down to this bridge. If you come here, you will see a set of levers. Now, the raid itself takes place uh, in a different location than the location we're going to. The location we're going to is a labyrinth where you will be able to use keys that you get from completing the raid encounters for additional loot. Uh, so, the way that you do this, there's a sequence to this, and before you guys say, oh, you look that up, no. This sequence I figured out with my fire team by testing each of each of the levers uh, with six people, just like constantly testing it out. I went, okay, let's try one, two. One, two doesn't work. Okay, let's try one, three. So like, what you want to do is you would want to number these. You want to number these left to right. So this is lever number one, number two, number three, number four, five. And there is another one over here, number six. So what I did with my fire team is I just started, okay, so I want one person in each lever and then I'm going to start calling out an order. So I went one, two, then I went one, three, one, four, and when we got to one, five, both levers went down. So I was like, okay, so it's one, five. Now we go one, five, two, one, five, three. And we went that way until we came up with the right sequence. And the right sequence that I initially came up with was one, five, um, one, five, three, two, four, six. So that is the sequence in which you will have to pull these levers. Now, obviously I had a fire team, which made it a lot easier, but you can do it solo. It's just probably going to take me a couple of tries. So anyway, one, Five, three. Oh shit, that was two. No, that fucked up. Forget about it. So, one, five, three, two, four, six. Six! No, I was too slow. Got to do it faster. There you go. The way is open. Once you hear that, the way is open. It means you've successfully done the sequence. Now, you just climb up here. You can ignore them. They're upset because you opened the door. They're like, you motherfucker, you opened my goddamn door. If you want, you can take the jumps, but it's actually easier if you don't. Then you go through here. 
And the door that opened is this one. Of course, it's dark as fuck and I can't see a damn thing. Okay, this pipe ends here. And congratulations, you're in the underbelly of the Leviathan. Now have fun looking for the dumb chest that you got the key for, only to get some crappy loot. Because to be completely honest, none of the loot that I've picked up from these chests that are in here has been worth it. Like, none of it. And I'm talking like the loot's been 10 levels below my level. So the only thing you're actually going to get out of coming to the underbelly and doing these dumb chests is the callus tokens, which I still don't know where the fuck Benedict 9940 is. I don't know who this person is. Maybe you only get it after you finish the raid. But anyway, then you're going to have to activate lifts and navigate this fucking... I, you can tell that I'm, that I'm upset with this, with this part because I lost uh, two fire teams to this labyrinth like people just got tired and they left that's how that's how mazy this place is you can be here for hours looking for things and not finding them however this is the checkpoint system of the new raid this is the checkpoint system of the leviathan raid this is how you skip bosses and all that stuff they're gonna have to use things to open up these doors and as you open up these doors are gonna be these security things that are gonna pop up they're annoying as dick so you want to kill them as fast as you possibly can. And boom, reinforcements are coming in. So now you're going to have a bunch of enemies swarm you. Oh crap, I'm not even with my proper loadout. And like I said, you can farm these enemies. They're not particularly hard. They will fuck you up, though, but you can you could see that I'm dealing enough damage to fucking deal with them. It's not a problem. I think I just spawned on a different spot. How convenient. Actually, you know what? Let's break this shit down. Let's break it down! There are... There you are. Still one? Where's the enemy? There you are. And after that, you can kill these things. Or not, you know. They're not a problem after you kill the enemies. However, some rooms uh, will have hidden chests. They will have, like, hidden doors. I'm not sure if this room has one. Let me see. Uh, there are these doors that are, like, gilded in here. Looks like this room doesn't have one. Oh, it does. Like, you see this door over here? This will probably be a chest, and considering we're in the transfer area, you might get a key that will say transfer area, or transfer key, or something along that nature. And in order to get this dumbass door to open, you're going to have to kill all of these watchers uh, without them being able to spawn reinforcements. So, yeah, this particular door probably requires a fire team. Uh, so for the drain key, for instance, which is the key that I had last time, those of you watching my Twitch stream, um, I actually got that key with just one other person, because I was lucky enough, someone from the clan, I was coming, I was coming here solo, but someone from the clan joined in, they just kind of followed me in, and when I got to the place where I needed to kill these watchers, I was able to organize with him, and we were able to dispatch, uh, these watchers. And open up the door to the drain chest, which I already opened. But yeah. Those are all the tips that I wanted to give you today for Destiny. Sorry that it took me so long to open up the, the fucking thing. I might edit that part out of the stream. The frustrating missing missed attempts. Um, but yeah. That's all I wanted to tell you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this video helps you out and raising your power in destiny you guys can join the ironbreaker clan i would love to eventually organize uh raids and stuff with clan with people from the clan but recently i haven't even been able to like get people to just group up to do a nightfall let alone 
um, <clears throat> let alone do more than that. So my advice is if you guys are in the clan, please, please, if you have a smartphone, and most people have smartphones nowadays, get the Destiny app. Like I have a, a Destiny app right here. I get this thing. Because, like, if you get the Destiny app, you can come to the clan section, which is, like, the second tab. And there's this thing in here where there's constantly people sending out messages. And you can, like, group up with people. Like, we have Jiroeonimo98 right now trying to do uh, the Rat King quest. We have Ymir Greywolf wanting to try to do the raid. So, you know, try to get this stuff so that you can, so that you can join in on the clan activities. Because if you don't, it's going to be very hard to, like try and communicate with everyone in the clan uh, and the easiest way is like don't even send out invites is just go to the chat and say i want to do nightfall join my fire team because people you can join anyone's fire team from the raid so long as their fire team is open like my fire team is invite only right now because obviously i'm working on a, on this video but like um for instance i could join captain pinata's team i could join nas blah, drw team you know and you can just be like, go to the thing, send a message, tell people, join my fire team. People will see your name and they can instantly join. Like Geronimo, who wants to do the Nightfall, you can just go, you know, just join my fire team, do Nightfall, and you can instantly join in and just do the activity. So hopefully, Ironbreakers can help each other out because I would love to see more of that because whenever I send messages for Nightfalls and stuff, just nobody replies. So try to keep your phone next to you with the app on when you are playing so that you get the notifications and you see it. Although, ideally, Bungie, if you happen to watch this, you know, it'd be great if we could just see a notification whenever there's a clan chat message. Like, you know, the same way that when you're on the city, you get messages like this. You see Rurikon dances, you know. Whenever anyone sends a message in clan, if we could just see it in game, it would be like fucking next level. Because, like, we could just, you know, instantly respond. We could see it. We, we wouldn't need to be on the phone. The only person needing the phone would be the one issuing a request. Actually seeing the messages in game would be fantastic. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way to actually see the messages, but that would be great. Because, <laughs> like, we can see this stuff. What's this? Requires clan level 3. Increase public event rewards. Okay. Yeah, we need to level up the clan some more. But from what I can tell, there's no way to actually see anything. Like, there's not, there's even, like, this clan options thing. I can't even leave the clan because I'm the founder. I just can't fucking leave it. I'm done. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this stream. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button. If this uh, stream slash video helped you out in any way, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button so that you're always notified when there's a new video or there's a new stream on the channel. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.